Hello there, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur known as Wise Courtship all over social media. What? You're not subscribed to the Wise Courtship philosophy? Oh my goodness, you've got to listen to this podcast so that you can get your free lifetime subscription as we help you get committed relationships, whole relationships that you're going to be satisfied with. No playing and no games. Find out what they're really about by tuning in. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans. Because love has no labels. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur, known as Wise Courtship all over social media. Because of my book with a three-step system, it will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And um, listen, this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer, where we come together to um, pray and read God's word. And of course, encourage one another. So go ahead and share this broadcast by touching it right over there. <laughs> That's right. And when you share it on Facebook, you're going to share it with um, everyone, your, all your friends. You're going to um, also invi- invite individual people into the broadcast. And also you can start a watch party. And of course, if you're watching me via Periscope, go ahead and share by touching down there. Uh huh. Share it with all of your followers. Tweet it out. And of course, you can put it on Facebook. And if you're watching me via YouTube, like and subscribe and leave a comment, okay? (laughs) Leave a comment. So good to see each and every one of you. Let's see who's in so far. Good to see you, Judy. Make sure you share this broadcast. Good to see you. And listen, guys, um, we're going to have a great time today because we're going to talk about my father. Yes, indeed. So get ready because moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer starts right now. So good to see each and every one of you. All righty, let's get started in this place. I hope that you have your Bibles, your iPads, your apparatuses. Um, yeah, I'm still having work done on my house, y'all. So if I look a hot mess, y'all know what's going on. <laughs> I can't get to any of my stuff, all right, while they're working on the house. So, so anyway, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? And um, today we're going to talk about my father. Thank you guys for watching me on other platforms. Good to see you. Good to see you. I see the numbers up there. Good to see you. Hey there, um, J. Rob. Good to see you. Let me know where you are scoping from. Joining us from Periscope. Let me know where you're where you're watching. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. I'm so happy to, uh, for you to have your day on today. And um, you know, if you're a good father, you need to be celebrated. Okay. Yes, indeed. So, all right, let's get started. Um, we're going to first look at, we're going to look at two scriptures today, two scriptures, all right? And um, the first one, I'm going to read a little bit more. 
So um, I'm going to read Psalms 103, 13 through 18. Okay, 13 through 18. But I'm going to really focus just on verse 13. But I wanted to get a little bit more. And I try to give you a little bit more when I can. All right, you ready? I'm going to be reading from the New International Version, okay? Um, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children and those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. Let's see who just came in the room. Good to see you. So we're going to focus on Psalm 103.13, okay? Oh, you. Oh, thank you so much for joining us from Massachusetts. Good to see you, Arlene. Good to see you from, um, she's following us via Periscope. Good to see you on today. So you are um, joining us from Massachusetts. Thank you so much for that. And I thank you for the compliment too as well. All right, so um, let's look at Psalm 103.13. That's where I wanna focus on. Are you guys there with me? Okay, so let's focus on Psalm 103.13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And um, I'm gonna read the other scripture just a little bit, uh, just in a little bit, okay? Um, I wanted to just give a tribute to all of our fathers out there, um, especially those who are really um, trying to uh, work with your children and your family. First of all, we want to say we appreciate you. Somebody say happy Father's Day in the chat box, please. Uh, We appreciate you. And so um, I had a great father. I had an amazing father. I got a little bit too much going on up here. (laughs) I had an amazing father. Um, and I said had because he is he's been with the Lord since 1985. Um, I did have him for about 19 years of my life. And I'm so appreciative. His name um, was the Reverend Dr. Steve C. Henderson, Jr. Many people who are watching this broadcast, many of you know about his ministry, his legacy. He has really, really been a blessing to so many people. I mean, he's that old school pastor. It's going to be with you in the hospital, going to be with you uh, when you're in trouble with the law, go before the judge, um, feeding the homeless, all kinds of things. And he wasn't just a person who would just feed the homeless. The homeless would be in our house, okay? Those who didn't have and those who didn't have a place to stay, they were there. He trained so many um, men in the ministry, men and women in the ministry. Uh, he was a moderator um, over the association that we had. He worked on the national level at the National Baptist Convention as a leader. Matter of fact, our whole legacy, family legacy, including myself, worked as a leader in the National Baptist Convention. Um, But I am who I am because of him. And of course, my awesome mother who's still alive. Um, He protected me, he provided for me. And when he died, you could feel that protection. You could feel that um, provision remove itself because he was no longer there. And um, first of all, I want to um, say to all of you who have lost your father, I understand what that's like. And so my heart is with you. My prayers are with you. Um, as we um, you know, go through life, eventually um, the pain lessens, but you never, never forget the person um, that was in your life known as your father. And so I salute them. I also want to salute my husband, Brian Mayers, who's the father of our two sons. And I th- believe he has done a tremendous and awesome and amazing job. So I'll definitely shout out to that. Good to see you, woman of God. Uh, Derry Darby, we were just saluting your book. Uh, put that through the chat box for us, okay, darling? We were saluting your book uh, the other day. And I do believe give an honor to whom honor is due. And so with all of that being said, um, you know, I had an amazing father. He was a father to other people's uh, children and uh, to so many people who didn't have a father. He was definitely a spiritual father because he was a pastor. And so he was uh, watching over all of our souls and teaching us and training us and did an amazing, amazing job. I believe a lot of what I've learned from the Bible um, was from his teaching. So I thank God so much uh, for him. But, you know, um, even with all that he has done, 
even with all of the wonderful things that he did in my life, my brother's life, my two sisters' lives. Uh, and it's so evident, the training and all that he's done. And then you, you may look under, if you follow me on Facebook, you may look under my post. Some people are talking about how my father's ministry blessed them and how he blessed them even as a man. But even with all of that, even with all of that, he is human. He's a human. He's in human flesh. And uh, that's why you ought to celebrate your dad, because, listen, you only have him for a short time, for a short season. OK, we just read that. I think we just read that. I don't know if I got rid of it or is that in my next reading, maybe. Uh, no, we just read that. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure which verse it was because I just got rid of. Let me see if I can bring that up. Um, about life being just basically a vapor. And here it is in verse um, um, verse 15. It says, the life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and, it play, and its place remembers it no more. And that's important to know. Somebody put that's important in the chat box. That's important to know um, because Fathers, our human fathers, are only with us for time, for a season. Some of you guys um, don't know your father at all because they haven't been around or they walked out. Some of you guys had your, your father when, and up until the time you were an infant, so you don't have much memories of him. And some of us lost him as children or teenagers and some at young adults. And some of you are so blessed. Your father's in their 90s or 100 and something. And you pretty much had your father your whole life. And what a blessing. What a blessing. If you had a father that blessed you, could you put that in the chat box too, whether you're watching me live or in the replay? Let me know if you were blessed by your father. And so that's a blessing. But for those of us uh, who've lost our father, we know the time we have with our father is so short and so precious. And because they're human, they can't live forever. They cannot live forever. And then there's some of you who say, um, that's right. And there are some of you who say, good to see you, Tracy. I didn't see you come in. Good to see you. And there are some of you who um, who say, um, well, you know, I didn't have my father at all. You know, he wasn't good to me or he was in and out or he just didn't do his job. And I see that. And this is why I wanted to have this lesson, because even though I had an awesome father, you know, I spent my life uh, first 19 years, a two parent family. And then after that, it quickly went into single parenthood. Um, and my mother had to work all the time. I had to work all the time while I was in college and things like that. Um, but I was blessed for the time that I had. But, but what it tells me is, is that nothing is promised, guys. Are y'all listening to me? Nothing is promised. And the fathers we have here are what we call our earthly fathers. Somebody put that in the chat box, our earthly fathers. And that means that they have limitations because they're human. But the father that I want to talk to you about today has no limitations whatsoever. As a matter of fact, if you are one of the people who say, I, I never had a father or the fa my father wasn't good to me, this father will always be there for you. He will always be good to you. He will always be loving. He will always be kind. And even when he disciplines, he disciplines differently. And so I, I want to tell you a little bit about him, okay? And that's God, our father. He is an everlasting father. He will always be with you. And there's nothing that you can do that will change his love for you. Yes, you need to get on board. Yes, you need to straighten your ways. You need to straighten up and fly right, okay? <laughs> but he is not going to disown you because you made some mistakes. Oh, my God. Somebody put that there. God is not going to disown me because I made mistakes. Yes, indeed. Bless it. I know. Um, and I remember your father very, very well. He was a good friend of my father's. And so I remember him very, very well. Very, very, very nice uh, person and a uh, wonderful person and loving person. And so you were so blessed, just like I was blessed, Tracy. I'm telling you. So listen, let's look back at Psalm 103, 13. It says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And so uh, God is compared or is in uh, God's compassion is compared to like a father's compassion. OK, your father ought to have some compassion. He should not be, you know, uh, so tough and so rough that he does not show love through compassion. 
He ought to have some compassion for you. Because listen, God the Father, the maker and creator of all things, the one who spoke worlds into existence, this Father, God our Father, he has compassion as well. He has compassion just for our, for his children, okay, for us, just like an earthly father has compassion for his children. But he has compassion on those who fear him. And this is not the type of fear because, see, some people have had fathers that they are afraid of. They were abusive. Maybe they were rather loud and boisterous and, and made you want to run into a closet and hide and all of that. But God is that. He's not talking about that type of fear. He's talking about the fear of reverence, of, of respecting him. When you respect him, you know, you get to see his compassion. You get to see that. OK. And that this tells us too that we ought to respect our fathers, our earthly fathers. Okay, they don't they, they may not do everything that we agree with, everything that we want. They may not buy everything we want and all of that. They may even get us angry, but we are not to disrespect them. We are to honor them, and to love them, and to cherish them. I know sometimes they don't always get it straight, and we want to run straight to mom. <laughs> Because we feel like mom is going to have a quicker answer or she's she's going to know where something located or he and mom understands that you are in love and dad just doesn't understand all of that. But fathers have their place and they have their purpose and we are to honor them. OK, whether we agree with them or not, whether they've been abusive or not, we can still respect them and honor them and get to safety. OK. <laughs> We can still listen, not listen to things that we know are illegal and immoral, but still give honor and respect. OK. And so um, and I and I teach that in some other, you know, in my wise courtship uh, workshops and conferences. I teach that. OK. And how to actually do that. Um, and so you have to check me out at wisecourtship.com on wise courtship on all social media platforms. Check me out and you will get some nuggets and some lessons and classes and courses. As a matter of fact, let me put up. Uh, my link for one of my um, where you can go get my online courses and I will show you how to do that because I know it can be difficult. Somebody say it can be difficult. There's a link right there. It can be difficult, you know, to deal with fathers and mothers who are not in Christ and they want us to do all kind of crazy things or they start all kind of trouble and heartache and, and headache. Okay. It's not easy, but you need to do it. And there's a way to do it, okay, without compromise, without um, um, uh, uh, listening to all types of negativity and, and, and getting yourself all tied up in a knot uh, over what your parents are doing to you and, and without hindering your destiny based off what they're saying to you. I want to welcome everybody who's watching, especially if you're watching me on other platforms as well. Good to see you. Make sure you let me know that you've been watching. I just want to just casually teach on today. You know, I'd I be just trying to casually teach because y'all got enough hooping and hollering and, and all of that. And I tell you, the pastor really preached on today. Oh, my goodness. But I just love to teach stuff that's going to be practical, practical teaching. OK. And so, yeah, it can be difficult. My gosh. And so the scripture says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him or those who respect him. Let me see if I can get a, another um, translation. Let's see what the Message Bible has to say, if I can find it real quick. Let's see what the Message Bible has to say on this wise, okay? <laughs> oh, Lordy, I don't know if I got it up here on the Message Bible. Let's see. Maybe it's up further. There we are. So it says in the Message Bible. Oh, my gosh. God makes everything come out right. Oh, no, no. They got this up too far. Why is it this this long? I got to find it here. Um, as parents, as parents feel for their children, God feels for those who fear him. So it's just basically the same thing. The respect, when we respect God, you see his compassion. God has compassion over you. You love him. And listen, when we respect God, and in other words, when we obey his commandments, when we respect him, when we honor him, it lets us know and lets him know we are in connection and that we are in a relationship with him. And he shows us compassion. He shows us love. He's not going to let you just show love and he's not going to show love. OK, sometimes many of us are used to that, that we show all kind of love to our earthly father 
and we don't get that love back. But you can show love to God and he's going to show it to you. Even when you don't show love, he's going to show love to you too as well. So I want to go to the next scripture. Um, and I want us just once again, as we're changing scriptures, I want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. Today we're talking about my father, my father. And I pray that my father is your father. And I'm going to tell you how he can be your father too as well. So let's look at Proverbs 3, 11 through 12. Proverbs 3, 11 through 12. And this is the New International Version, by the way. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. And I'm going to read from the Message Bible too as well. And it says, I don't know why it always comes into the middle thing here. Let's see. Uh, well, let's go a little bit further up. Um, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God, run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give the first and the best. Your barns will burst, your wine vats will brim. But don't, dear, fear, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Okay, this is where we want to be. But don't, dear friend, resent, resent God's discipline. It's the child he loves that God corrects. A father delight uh, is behind all this. Listen, there's a, there is a, a consensus of feelings for some people that um, you if you discipline me, you don't love me. Are y'all listening today? There are some people who believe that if you don't, if you discipline me, then you don't love me. But here in the scripture, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12 says, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke. You need to be corrected because listen, this is what verse 12 says, because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son delights um, in it in delights in. Listen, if, if you have a parent and they just let you run around and do anything that you want to do, I wish y'all answered me today. If you have a parent that lets you run around and do anything you feel like doing, they're not showing love. They are not showing love, okay? Yes, there are some parents who feel like their hands are tied. They don't know what to do when it comes to discipline their children, but they will seek help, okay? They will cry out in some way. So that they can get help but i want to encourage every parent that you need to discipline your children now let's get the correct meaning of discipline because people feel like some people feel like discipline means abuse that's not the same thing discipline and abuse is not the same thing okay discipline is where you're going to bring some sort of order out of that behavior but that doesn't mean you got to smack them around okay you you can you structure this one listen we have um really have never really had to um resort to anything like that we can sit down and talk to our sons but you got to start early somebody put early in the chat box you got to start early with your children oh i know what i'm talking about see once again um i do teach what's right whether you know because you got to teach what's right whether you doing it or not you need to teach what's right but i just tend to teach stuff that um i tend to do pretty well in <laughs> And anybody who knows my children, my children have been very well disciplined. Okay, it can be was have been very well disciplined, and you got to start with them early. Hey, Miss Delina, good to see you. You got to start with them early. It doesn't mean that it's too late once they're teenagers or whatever, because then you can pray and you can still work with them and do the very best you can. But the earlier you start with them, the better. And 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 you teach them from the beginning. I'm correcting you because I love you. If you let me walk out there and I got toilet paper hanging from my, my shoes and, and, and you just looking like, mm, okay, then you're not invested in me. You're not in relationship with me. You don't care anything about me because you're going to just let me walk out there looking any kind of way. That's why we got to get out of this culture of, of the culture of offense. 
you offended me. Okay, you got to get over it, boo. Because when you got real, this is a gnat bothering me. That's why I keep going like this. <laughs> because when you get offended easy and nobody can't tell you anything, you could turn out to be a monster. Does anybody, is there an adult that comes to mind that you know they probably didn't either get discipline or they didn't listen to discipline because they a hot mess as an adult? Okay. You don't think about who I'm thinking about. <laughs> Completely out of control. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, completely out of control. There are some adults walking the earth right now. They are off the chain. In other words, they are so, um, they, they lack discipline. And much of that comes because they have not been disciplined as a child. But here in the scripture, come on, let's go back to the scripture now. Let's go back to the scripture. Let's go back. I'm going to put it up here too. because Some of y'all just came in. Let's go back to the scripture. It says, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not revert, resent his rebuke, excuse me, because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son delight in. And discipline is in any method of correction, really. I mean, it could be just sitting down and talking to you. OK, it could be sitting you to the side, what we call time out. It could be taking something away that you playing with or that you would really like to do at that moment. OK, it could be talking to you. And some of you would rather get the beat down than have your parents sit and talk to you. Because, you know, that talk will make you feel real bad. <laughs> it's going to be long and make you feel bad. OK. My God. But you got to do something. Somebody put do something in the chat box. You can't allow your children to run around uh, crazy acting. They taking stuff from the stores and you, you don't say anything. You don't correct that. You know, you know that they're, they're, they're stealing stuff out the can, the cookie jar on the shelf. Any of that stuff. It starts off with a cookie. And the next thing is the television set. So y'all y'all not fiddling with me today. Oh, I know that's right, Judy. Judy's a, uh, are you a retired teacher now? Because I used to teach myself. And when I was in the public school, that's one of the reasons why I came out. Because I said, if I can't discipline you, I'm out. I'm out. Because you can't, Lee Cantor is a, an ed educator and his uh, he has a discipline system. And one of his mantras was that you cannot teach unless uh, you have discipline. I see some people see that as somebody whirling a stick and, and cracking a whip. We're not talking about that. But you, yeah, oh, I thought you were retired. We're not talking about that. We're talking about you have to be under control and you've got to be focused so that I can be able to teach you. And anybody who loves you is not going to let you run around and do anything you feel like doing. Oh, my gosh. You know, I bring correction a lot of times in my business. Yes, I do. Because some of us, we feel like um, when we got black business owners, we feel like stuff should be for free. <laughs> and I bring out correction, honey. I'll bring out the correction in a mo in a minute and let you know. No, And then got enough nerve to tell me how expensive somebody else is. Well, if that is that be the case and, and I'm already look like I'm a bargain, then what in the world? I had to bring about correction. You know, I have a teacher's heart, even though I'm not in the classroom no longer. I mean, I'm been a professor. I still teach online, you know, as a professor, but I just have a, a teacher's heart. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a teacher. You have some financial planners that have a te teacher's heart. You have some people who are an auto mechanic and they have a teacher's heart. What they do is they take time to explain stuff to you. Okay, because we understand that if we teach it to you, and you really learn it, then you got it. You don't have to go past. That's why I don't get mad at young people and all this kind of stuff. Folk be fussing. But I like, did you teach them? Because if you didn't teach them, what you fussing about? OK. We're talking about my father. That's what we're talking about on today, guys. And so we find out that God, our father, is a compassionate father. He's a provider. OK, he's a protector, he's compassionate. 
And he will also, he's not just all compassion and all fuzzy wuzzy and ooh, we just so cozy and, and we can just do anything we want and God's gonna be so compassionate. I read you another side of the scripture that shows you that he will discipline you. Okay, so just just when you thought you were going to just use God, you know how some of us are. When we receive love, and that's something you got to work on. When we receive love, that means that we get to manipulate the person. We get to take advantage of the person. We get to take, take, take. I've seen that in relationships. Y'all know I'm wise courtship, so I'm always dealing with people in relationships. I have co people that I coach, uh, clients that I coach as well. And I see that a lot of times. Sometimes they ruin their whole relationship because when they're shown love, that means to them, I get to abuse you. I get to manipulate you. I get to uh, control what you do. I get to take from you on a regular basis. And I have to teach. Here I go with my teacher's heart and say, no, love is about give and take. It's reciprocal. Okay. And so God is letting you know, even in this scripture, he's compassionate. Oh, he's compassionate. He's loving. Listen, you can make all kinds of mistakes, but if you come to him and you confess your sins, the Bible says he's faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He's going to forgive you. He's not going to remember it anymore. That's my father. That's God the father. Okay. He'll never do it anymore. Some of y'all got fathers that are still holding grudges on you and we pray for them. We pray, for them, but God is not like that. Y'all God is not like that. But then I read a scripture to you about God will discipline. He disciplined, but he disciplines the ones he loves. And so that is why, for those of you who are Christians, when you go to do something and you know you did something that was wrong, you feel the correction. You feel the discipline coming. That's why your conscience is, 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 is driving you nuts. Because guess what? Your conscience is not your conscience. Your conscience is the Holy Spirit, which is the third personality of God. Is God living in you? And so he's correcting you right there. Now, you know, you shouldn't have did that. Good to see you, Amani. Good to see you. And he says, and he's speaking to you now. You know, you shouldn't have did that. Not to condemn you, but to help you get right. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you guys for joining me on various platforms. And so we see God in two ways. We see God as a compassionate God. But we also see him as somebody who will discipline you. He's not going to let you just get out there and do any old thing because he loves you. That's why you can't feel comfortable in the crack house. Huh? That's why you can't feel comfortable. You hanging all in the clubs and starting fights and all kind of stuff. And, and, and that's why you don't feel comfortable robbing people and, and knocking people over the head and all this kind of stuff. That's why you don't feel comfortable like that. Because God in you is speaking to you and say, well, you know what? You don't need to do that. You're better than that. You are king. You are a queen. You are a royal priesthood, a peculiar person, a royal priesthood. You don't need to do that. And so my father, which is God, the father, he's the father of us all. If you allow him to be and you say, well, how do I allow God to be my father? Well, first of all, you got to, first of all, believe there is a God. You got to believe in his son, Jesus Christ. You got to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, the things that you have done wrong. Okay. And we all have done stuff wrong. I know um, I'm doing great. Let me know where you are scoping from, Manny. This is the first time with us. All the people, if it's your first time, make sure you follow me by touching down there. Follow me there. All of the Periscope people see I got a lot of followers there and I appreciate each and every one of you. And I got a lot of hearts too. I think over 7 million hearts there. And I'm um, good to see about four or 5,000 people following me. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> good to see you, Manny. Let me know where you're scoping from, okay? And so, first of all, you got to believe that um, Jesus Christ is God's son. That's what you got to first believe. Then you got to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, the things you've done wrong. And we all have done something wrong, okay? He's not trying to get you to confess because he wanna condemn you, but he wants you to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you gotta believe it in your heart, okay? Not just say it with your mouth, but you got to believe it in your heart. You can't just believe it in your heart and not say it out your mouth, but you got to believe it. Um, and then you will be what we call safe. You are part of the family. Judy is following us here from California. Good to see you. Thank you. 
Um, Manny, let me know also too where you are scoping from. Everyone who didn't let us know, please let us know where you're um, scoping or where you're watching from Facebook from. And so you will be what we call saved. So all you have to do is say, Jesus, come in, Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you um, died on the cross for my sins. I believe it. I'm confessing it out of my mouth. And you're saved. And once you say God is your father, you can talk to God about anything, just like you would your earthly father. You can tell him all about it. You don't have to have a formalized prayer. Sometimes I get in my car and I just start talking again because <laughs> I'm still having my continued conversation with God. And he listens. He hears you. That doesn't mean he's going to be your bellhop. OK, it's not going to be your, your spiritual Santa Claus. It does mean, though, that he can hear your cries. He can hear he hears your heart and he's going to do what's best for you in his time. But you sure can ask him and all of those things that he promised you in the Bible. You can definitely declare that and know that that's going to come to pass. And if you don't know what they are, you need to read the Bible. You need to read God's word. And so that's who my father is. My, I told you about my earthly father, but God the father is my spiritual father. And guess what? He can be your spiritual father too as well. So now we're going to go before um, God our father in prayer. I'm going to see if I had any prayer requests. Um, and if I did not, I'm going to do a general prayer. And where I'm looking is in my private community, guys, to see if anybody um, left a prayer request, okay? Because I know y'all like, what is she doing? For those who don't know. All right, so let's see. Um, I'm live in my community. Okay, so no prayer requests. But listen, when I put on these glasses, please put your prayer requests up through the chat box, and I will pray for you. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up. We magnify you, oh God. We just give you all honor, all glory, all praise. We recognize you as the one true father, the one true God, the father of fathers. And we just love you so much. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for being there for us. But first of all, we ask, oh God, that you forgive us. Forgive us for all the things we have done wrong. Forgive us for the things that we have done that have not been pleasing in your sight. Forgive us for not realizing that you are our father, uh, even though we may have lost our earthly father, even though our earthly father may have turned his back on us, even though um, we had a wonderful father and they died and went on to heaven, to went on to glory, God. We, um, we ask for forgiveness for not recognizing you and not turning to you for our every need. God, we just love you and we bless you and we praise you. God, we pray for the Jeffers family, uh, for Pastor Rodney Jeffers. Uh, as you continue to heal his body, we thank you, oh God, for bringing him out and for healing him. We're so grateful. God, we pray for um, Audrey Wiggins, uh, Pastor Audrey Wiggins, oh God, uh, touch her even as she um, remembers um, the death of her son. We, we pray, oh God, for her. We're still praying for uh, Tracy Miles and her family, oh God, uh, even in their bereaved state and all that they're going through. God, we pray for the Wise Courtship family. Go ahead and put your prayer requests up. We pray for the Wise Courtship family, those who are watching us on the um, live stream and those who um, come to the conferences, the courses, who've read the book, oh God, who've seen us on television and heard us on radio. We pray for those broken hearts and those mending hearts and those uh, those committed hearts, oh God, uh, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for every mother on this broadcast and a special prayer for every father on this broadcast. God, touch them now. Increase them in every way. Bless them, oh God. Fill them with the compassion that you talked about, God. And let them not be afraid to discipline as necessary, oh God, in a loving way. Oh, God, and pray, oh God, I pray for these parents to take the time to teach them about you, about a father that they will always have in their lives, that will always be there to love them, to protect them, and to guide them. God, I pray for every ministry leader here, every pastor, every preacher, oh God, um, every spiritual uh, leader. God, we pray for every business owner 
here in the name of Jesus, God. We pray for each and every one. If you got a prayer request, go ahead and put it up at this time. God, we pray for, I saw a prayer request pop up here. God, we pray for the Smith family, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Surround them. Put your loving arms around them. God, we still pray uh, for the, the Bree family of Leroy Smith. We still pray for the Bree family, the Coleman family, uh, for Minister Candace Coleman. We're still praying for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you bless them and you take care of them, oh God. God, we pray for the upcoming conference and opportunity, God, that you will um, that you will bring the people, that you will bring the people who need to hear that message and that word, oh God, as we minister in uh, uh, in a virtual way, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we pray for every um, person who has lost their father, uh, who may still be mourning, oh God, every person who is still hurting from a father who hurt them, whether through abuse or walked away on them, God, we pray for every person. We pray for every um, upcoming father, uh, potential father, that you now implant your spirit in them, your patience, your compassion, your, your discipline, all of that that they will need, that you will um, touch them now so that they will be awesome fathers as they um, begin to impart into our future generations. God, we pray for each and every person who uh, may not have had the opportunity to put their prayer requests up, possibly was too private to share with anyone. We touch and agree right now, God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much. Good to see you, sis. That's Lakeisha Mosley, who is here from the Lakeisha Mosley Show. Good to see you. And is also one of the heavy hitter speakers that will be with me as we um, speak at a virtual conference uh, called An Opportunity. And I will be telling you guys more and more about that. I'm so excited about it because we look, we've been working on that thing. Well, the Lord switched it. He switched it. A co he switched it a little bit after the pandemic and wanted us to do it more virtual. So that should be easy for us because um, we've been doing virtual ministry um, for a while. So that should be easy for us. But I'm just really excited about that. And I'll be telling you guys about that in a few. Thank you so much for wishing happy Father's Day to my husband. I would tell him. <laughs> <laughs> for all of y'all is wishing Brian a happy Father's Day. Yes, yes, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm going to give us a little bit of encouragement before we go out the door. Amen, amen, amen. First of all, to fathers, let me just encourage you, beloveds. Uh, today we talked about, Lakeisha, we talked about my father. And we started off talking about my personal earthly father, and then we segue into talking about God, our heavenly father. And there's so much to know about God. That's why you need to read his word. Um, because I see a lot of Christians, um, they, they, some, some of them even preach God's word, they even preach it, but they're not really versed on his character. I don't know what happens that somehow they skip over that. Uh, and you want to be versed on his character. What I mean versed, you want to read about it and know it. I mean, you want to almost know it cold. You don't have to memorize every verse in the scripture, but just what his character is like. And the reason being is that when we have situations like this coronavirus and there's all this stuff that's going on with Black Lives Matter, um, what they represent and what they're fighting for. Okay, I'm not saying their problem. Let's get that straight. Okay, but what they're representing. See, some people are real balled up because they are expressing themselves in a way that makes you frightened. But what's more frightening is what they have to march uh, against. If they don't march against it, what the knees on the neck starts off with George Floyd, but it'll end up being on your neck. But I'm white, but I'm, I'm, I'm with this. No, no, baby. It'll end up on your neck, okay? It doesn't take long for it to stretch out to you, okay? It doesn't take long for it to be a problem. Because see, with evil, evil has no um, uh, respect of persons, okay? And so we, the reason why you need to know about God and his character is that when you go through situations like this, Oh, my God. When you go through situations like this, 
you have to be able to rely on the fact um, that you know who God is and what God is all about. And sometimes I mentioned that, that sometimes people can preach God's word, they can teach God's word and they do real well. They do real deep. They'll go real deep, honey. They'll go real deep. But when they get to God's character, they're a little shallow. And listen, none of us can be perfect, but I'd rather you be deep on knowing his character and be shallow on the rest because you got to have that blissful confidence in knowing that God is in control and God has got this. And you know, I'm just telling you, you know, we just human and at a time when we don't feel like, you know, and you know, sometimes some of us just get so cute and sick. Okay, y'all hear me. <laughs> I'm not talking to the ones here. I'm talking to the ones that listen. You know, some I can just feel it. Okay, that may be the, my prophetic nature. I can just feel that. Okay, well, you know, now that's in it, and that, that, that. You know, we come up with all these little. We just so smart. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. There gets times sometimes when some of us we want we deep into we get deep in the in the wrong things. It's good to know the mark of the beast. It's great. That's wonderful. But if you know the mark of the beast, but you can't rely on God and you can't know that he is in control, it's really not helping you. And we got to get to that point. We got to get to that point where we have total trust in him. And it's not to say that sometimes you won't be nervous. It's not to say that sometimes you're like, oh, Lord, what is this? But listen, once you go through that first shock value, you bounce right on back. Somebody put in the chat box, bounce back, bounce back. You bounce right on back to God. And so the encouragement for you today is, first of all, I encourage you to get to know God the Father because everything in your life that's happening, because a lot of people are balled up about how their life is turning out and what's going on in their lives. And let me tell you something, darling, sweetness. Let me tell you, there's nobody's life that's perfect. I don't know you watching some people. You're like, well, I don't know, Miss Tony. They living in a mansion and they riding and they doing, they riding large and, and they balling and all this kind of stuff. But you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And I guarantee you that everybody is going through something. Oh, my gosh. But you just need to bounce back. Everybody's going through something. Everybody. And the only way to deal with this stuff, the only way to get through some stuff in your life is to have God in your life and to know his character, to know all about him. That's why you need to have a relationship with him. You, that's why you need to read his word. That's the only way you're going to know all about him. That's the only way. And I'd rather you know all about him and be sure about that thing. Be sure just as, look, just as sure as I know, I will. I, look, I'm not saying I'm not black, okay? I am black. I love being black. All right. But I always teach people, I said, this is black. <laughs> this is black. I only seen a few people. I think maybe one or two people in my whole life that was actually black. You know, so I say I'm not black. I'm brown. Well, I'm the boogie down production or tan because I, I got a tan. Did y'all notice I got a tan? <laughs> I was out in that sun yesterday, boy, and I could soak it up. But listen, um, it's just as sure as I know I'm brown. Okay. <laughs> You ought to know that God is God has got you. You got to know that. Somebody put in there, I got to know that. You got to know that God is God and that God is in control. And we got a whole bunch of crazy folk running around here, y'all. A whole bunch of crazy people talking on the airways, a whole bunch of crazy people in office and all of that. But at the end of the day, you got to know that God is in control. Yes, you need to vote. Yes, you need to march. Yes, you need to go to school. Yes, you need to train. You need to do all of that stuff. You need to study. You need to do all of that. But at the most that you need to do is know that God is in control. I know that's right. Well, darlings, I'm getting ready to go. We've had an amazing time talking about my father. My father, which is your father, okay? <laughs> My father is your father. And we had an amazing talking about that. Exactly. God is in control. Well, I got to go. I'm just real laid back today. I think maybe because it's hot. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, indeedy. Hey, Kathy, good to see you. Let me know where you are broadcasting from here on Facebook. Good to see you. 
Listen, we come on every Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about God and um, just to um, really just get into his word and to connect and all of that. Um, before I go, I want to let you guys know that uh, I have a wonderful, wonderful person that I live stream with in the past and I he has a t-shirt line here and he's such an awesome young man and he learned the name of light bringer i'm called wise courtship on periscope and on periscope guys those who are watching me there he's known as the light bringer why don't you check out his little store there he's got some t-shirts he's excited about why don't you guys support him and bless him and let him know that miss tony sent you that way and, and I guarantee you, he's going to continue to bring the light. I'm telling you, you would know and believe this young man, how he just so sincere and so open. And when he talks about God, he definitely brings the light. <laughs> well, darlings, I got to go. Uh-huh. But I can be reached on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere. It's Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control. God is still on his throne. He's still in control. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Hello there, this is Tony Henderson Mayer's television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur known as Wise Courtship all over social media. What? You're not subscribed to the Wise Courtship philosophy? Oh my goodness, you've got to listen to this podcast so that you can get your free lifetime subscription as we help you get committed relationships, whole relationships that you're going to be satisfied with. No playing and no games. Find out what they're really about by tuning in.